what's going on you guys it's d machine i'm bringing you some 2v2 arenas as retribution paladin hunter with some commentary explaining what it is i'm doing explaining what it is you should try to do and uh ultimately uh beating specific comps now i'm gonna show you my talents and i'm gonna show you my glyphs here so you know what the baseline is for talents and glyphs and then i'll after each comp i'll tell you what it is you should change and how to utilize the changes that you make to your glyphs and talents so let's jump right into it okay so the first game is rogue boomkin the best skill target for this team is going to most always be the boomkin Rogues have a number of abilities to survive, like Cloak, Faint, Vanish, Evasion, and even Combat Readiness. Um, when you kill the Boomkin, um, you need to kill them within 30 seconds of the match, or Heart of the Wild is going to literally save them, because you're going to run out of stuns and silences. Um, if you see them running away and stabilizing, stay alive as long as possible. Uh, the ideal situation from that moment on is to turtle until your cooldowns come back. Now, a good team, especially a good rogue, will not let you wait this long. So, definitely try to get back on the Boomkin if they're not letting you uh, wait that long and force the Boomkin defensive once again. A uh, quick tip for this game is to aura mastery the druid's beam. Um, I always run Divine Protection Glyph for this team and Burden of Guilt Glyph so the Boomkin can't kite me nearly as much and my wall also negates some of the Rogue's damage as well. Warrior Hunter. This team brings a lot of fucking damage. Your kill target is Hunter here. Warriors can live an extremely long time if they rotate through their defensive cooldowns well. As a rep paladin versus this comp, you will almost always be the kill target. But because a good hunter will try to control your he, uh, your partner, I stick with clemency to get for the two bops and the two sacks to get them out of traps and scatters. Uh, warriors are extremely reliant on crits. Uh, for damage so utilizing your hunter's roar or sacrifice on you is very important use it when you see recklessness burning a guilt uh the glyph will help you uh prevent the hunter from kiting and uh after you burst or during deterrence uh run behind a pillar think about the strengths and weaknesses of each comp right here Warrior Hunter have a lot more sustained damage than Rhett Hunter. In a longer game, Warrior Hunter will win because of this. Avoid as much damage as possible when the Hunter cannot be killed. And then when the Hunter's out of deterrence, go ham and try to get him killed. Think of it like there's a stopwatch and you're being timed to get this game over with. Resto Shaman Warrior. The, til the kill target can either be the Shaman or the Warrior, but knowing what's best for your team is key. Map also plays a pretty big role when it comes to kill target. Uh, this one is better than most for hard switching or tunneling the shaman. But we noticed early on in this game that the warrior used a lot of defensive cooldowns all together overlapping, which is never good. Uh, this is where your team synergy is really needed between you and your hunter. A good warrior will attempt to eat traps on scatter and on hodge. Uh, a preemptive disengage web on a warrior before trapping could be what wins the freaking game. I like to run Divine Protection Glyph and Double Jeopardy Glyph to make our hard switches that much more potent. Um, making, make, also make sure to kill totems. Totems are huge against this comp. Kill Healing Stream, Healing Tide, Grounding, Capacitor, and even Fire Elemental Totem can die pretty quick to a Hunter's damage, and it prevents a lot of damage even if it's a Healer's Fire Elemental. Retribution Paladin Priest. The kill target's going to be the Rep Paladin because it prevents the, the off healing, um, but you can look for switches on Health Swap. Uh, putting a healer through a CC chain might be difficult versus this team because all the outs a Rep Paladin brings to the table. Um, he has bops for scatter and sacks for hodges and traps, uh, and also cleanse for Wervin. Uh, though to be honest, the burst damage of Rep Paladin Hunter doesn't need too much time to make the Paladin bubble. Uh, probably if the Paladin's uh, bopping and then sacking 2 CC, uh, it's already enough time for us to force a bubble on the Paladin or get him to the point where they can't be healed or a defensive cooldown needs to be used. Uh, save CC until after you force, or I'm sorry, so you CC the Priest until you force a bubble, and then when the Paladin's in a bubble, play defensive. Um, now, if you have your cooldown still uh, like available to you when the Paladin's in bubble, switch to the Priest. If a Paladin's doing damage to you with a bubble up, he's doing 50% less damage. So, uh, just getting those Holy Avenger procs as a Rep Paladin will keep you alive no problem with a Paladin who's in a bubble. Um, when the Paladin comes out of a bubble, save your CC for that. And also, survive for as long as you need until your CC comes back. Then CC chain the Priest again and go for a kill on the Paladin. 
Uh, killing Whitewell and Siphon is very, very important. Um, unfortunately, priests have been glitching the well inside of walls to prevent people from killing it, but it doesn't mean that you still cannot kill it if you see it inside a wall. So, something to take into consideration when facing any Holy Priest. Rhett Hunter Mirrors. Now, Rhett Hunter Mirrors are more tricky than people give them credit for. Uh, killing a target will almost always be the Rhett Paladin. Um, only situation that we'd be killing the Hunter instead of the Rhett Paladin is if the Hunter is overextending a lot and the Rhett Paladin is humping a pillar. Uh, the best way i found to beat a mirror personally is to use my pal abilities to contradict theirs. For example, in this game, I lured them out uh, and I get, they used all their offensive cooldowns when I wasn't in melee range of the Rep Paladin. I walled and Hannah pet sacked me to prevent me from bubbling. If they don't force a bubble on their offensive cooldowns, you are very far ahead. But this strat, will, this strat will not work if your partner is in CC, so make sure to bop and sack them out of CC. Another way to face a mirror is to use your cooldowns very early and to force their bubble. As long as you are CC chaining their hunter and you're using your wall and pet sack during the paladins of cooldowns, uh, you will prevent you from using a bubble if you're using your selfless healer procs, um, and you could potentially force a bubble on that paladin. If both offensive cooldowns from each paladin are used and no bubble is used, you guys are still even and still in the same place. But if they mess up, you're going to pull out ahead. Warrior Druid. Very similar to the Shaman Healer team, uh, the kill target can either be uh, the Shaman, the Warrior, <laughs> or the Druid or the Warrior. Um, I often go double jeopardy for this team as well. Uh, switching to the Druid with no hots up or a trinket uh, can be devastating inside of one of your Hodges. Again, uh, continue to kill the Warrior uh, due to his use of defensive cooldowns. He uses them all overlapping each other, and it's not good. You, when you're playing a Warrior Healer, you want to be frugal with your defensive cooldowns because that's your strength. Your strength is to be able to um, survive or outlast most other teams. So when you're using your abilities like that, not frugally, uh, it's you're going to put yourself in a bad position. Uh, make sure to use a pet sack on um, on whichever target is being killed when the warrior is using recklessness. Um, so we just put the warrior, uh, put a lot of damage into the warrior and CC chain the druid. And because the warrior didn't have any defensive cooldowns when the druid is going through a CC chain, we ended up winning this game. Mage Shadow Priest. The kill target's going to be the mage to prevent like polymorph spams or icicle buildups because they build icicles when they uh, spam Frostbolt. Uh, Pet Sack is huge in this mat matchup, guys. Uh, Aurora Sacrifice uh, reduces crit chance by 100%, and if you don't know how mages work, they rely on crit greatly with their Fingers of Frost procs. Uh, their procs that they get from Orb or Deep Freeze. Uh, using sacrifice at a good time versus this team is bananas important. Uh, I like to use the bubble glyph because it heals me for every debuff I have on you. And um, the amount of debuffs that mages alone put on a target, especially with mirrors up, can heal me almost to full health. And is, which is very useful considering we can't heal ourselves to full health uh, when we're sitting in a bubble spamming heals on ourselves. Uh, Alter Time is also a really big ability that mages use to try to survive longer. Your hunter can actually purge it while it's up and actually prevent a mage from um, using it. Uh, cleanse Devouring Plague as soon as you see it. This prevents a buttload of damage. But ultimately, if you're on that mage and the mage is playing defensive, you're probably going to win. Alright guys, thanks for watching and I hope I help you in this video. Uh, as Hannah and I improve, I will be making more and more content with commentary, so stay tuned for that if you enjoyed this. Also, if you want to watch me and Hannah go live, make sure to follow my stream at twitch.tv slash dmachine52 and Hannah's at twitch.tv slash cluttermonkey7. I will also let you guys know when I go live on my Facebook page and my Twitter, so go ahead and follow my social media if you want to be notified when I go live. D-Machine, blast off.